So I think most of you should know of a pen called the Kaveco Sport. It's probably one of the most popular fountain pens in the fountain pen community. And looking at a lot of reviews of that fountain pen, it seems to be a very nice little pocket fountain pen. Now one of the most popular versions of the Kaveco Sport to get is the Kaveco Sport Brass. And brass is a very good material for small fountain pens because A, it is a very durable material and B, it adds a lot of weight to the pen which is something that you'd want if you're dealing with a very small pocket fountain pen. The only issue is when you get a Kaveco Sport brass version, the price will increase from about $25 when you pay for the plastic one to about $90 for the brass one, which is quite a lot of money. Now earlier this year I was made aware of a brand called Delike, it is a Chinese fountain pen brand, and they're making a pen called the Delike Alpha, which is pretty much a Chinese clone of the Kaveco Sport. Now they make that in resin and they do make it in brass. Now the brass version of that fountain pen will cost you around about $25 to $30, depending where you find it. Now the fountain pen that I have here is not a Delike Alpha. It is a Kaveco Sport clone, but it is not a Delike Alpha. And the price of it is not even half the cost of the Delike Alpha. This is a brass fountain pen that I picked up for $5 off Alibaba. And I'm not exaggerating that, the price of the fountain pen that I paid was five US dollars, which is crazy for a proper full-bodied brass fountain pen. And the cool thing about this fountain pen is it is very well built, it is really nice to write with, and it has a very, very nice nib. Now to put into perspective how good of a value this is, the price of a Kaveco Sport clip from Goulet Pens costs $6. $6 for just the clip. This fountain pen comes with a clone of the clip. So pretty much what you're paying for is a Kaveco Sport clip and with that, you get a free fountain pen plus a dollar left over because this only costs five US dollars. It is just crazy how good this fountain pen is and how cheap the fountain pen is. Now, at this point, I would like to tell you what the name of this fountain pen is, but unfortunately, I can't because I've seen this fountain pen sold under several different names. I saw this pen on Chris's channel with a different nib and that was sold under the Ira Ira Utia pen or something. I bought this pen and it was called the Mayita pen and I've seen it sold under different names. So I'll list a few links below, but the chances are if you find a brass fountain pen on Alibaba and it costs less than $10, it's going to be one of these pens. Okay, let's jump into the review with the specs of the fountain pen. So capped, this fountain pen is 11.6 centimeters long, uncapped is 11.2 centimeters long, and posted, it's gonna be about 14 and a half centimeters long. And in terms of the weight, it is brass, so it will be very heavy. Capped and posted, this pen is 45 grams in weight, and uncapped is 24 grams in weight. So in terms of the specs, this fountain pen is going to be very similar to the Kaveco Sport, both in terms of length and weight. In terms of it being capped and uncapped, it's within about 0.2 of a centimetre. It's very close to the Kaveco Sport. However, when you post this fountain pen, it's about one and a half centimetres longer than the Kaveco Sport, which is something that I like. The Kaveco Sport, when it's posted, is not a very long fountain pen, so I'm glad that they did make it slightly longer. And in terms of the weight, it's about two grams heavier than the Kaveco Sport when it is posted. And believe me, you are gonna be posting this pen pretty much all the time, because uncapped, this pen is 11.2 centimeters long, and that, honestly, is not long enough to you know, use this fountain pen. You really do need to post this fountain pen and you're gonna be posting this fountain pen every single time that you use it. The good thing is when you do post this fountain pen and it does post to be very securely, this fountain pen is usable. It's nice and heavy and it is certainly long enough. Now in terms of the ergonomics, the word that I'm gonna use is tolerable. They're the words that I'll use, they're not bad. And here's the reason why I use those words. 
I've never been a big fan of Kaveco Sports or any pen that tries to emulate the Kaveco Sport. However, I know a lot of people do like the Kaveco Sport, but having used a plastic Kaveco Sport, the ergonomics really never won me over. I'm not a big fan of the size of the grip. I think the size of the section is just too small. It's half the length of the grip on the Lamy Safari, and I'm just not a fan of the concave shape that they've given it. As well as that, there is a pretty harsh step up, you know, where the pen posts, and I'm not a big fan of the feel that the, you know, the octagonal cap um, feels in your you know palm or whatever. I really am not a big fan of the ergonomics of this fountain pen. It just hasn't won me over. So let's move on to the body of the fountain pen. And I have to say, for a $5 fountain pen that is machined from brass, they have certainly not skipped out on any details in the manufacturing process. This has been a very, very well machined fountain pen, and it has been machined from a piece of brass. And that certainly does cost a fair amount of money. Though looking at it, there aren't any issues with it. There's no defects and they have removed all the machine marks except a few machine marks on the inside of the cap that you can only see when you shine a light down it. Though looking at it, the build quality is certainly very, very nice. Everything's been removed, you know, the machine marks have been removed and replaced with a nice brushed finish. And as well as that, all of the, um, the threads have been nicely cut and they all mesh together very, very nicely. Now, apart from the ergonomics of this fountain pen, there are only about three other issues that I have with this fountain pen. First of them is when you do cap this fountain pen, there is a little bit of wobble and wiggle room you have with this fountain pen. And that's not the biggest issue. I have seen this issue in other fountain pens that do cost a lot more than this. The second issue that I have with this fountain pen is with the clip. The clip, while it is very nice, it is very, very loose on this fountain pen and it moves very easily with only a tiny amount of force. And several times I have gone ahead to, you know, clip it into my pocket and the clip will just fly off. It is very loose and I'm not sure if it's the same issue with the official Gaveco clip, but this one here just isn't all that great. And the final issue that I have with this fountain pen is over the time that I have been using this fountain pen, every time I do unscrew this fountain pen and pull it out, there have been marks and scratches that have been building up slowly every time that I unscrew this fountain pen. And the scratches are right here just behind the threads of the fountain pen. And it happens when you screw in the fountain pen. It is really annoying because it is very, very noticeable and it goes in a different direction to the brushed finish. And it is something that I am a little bit annoyed about. But at the end of the day, they are very light scratches and they are only cosmetic. Also, while subjective and not a big issue, I am not a big fan of the aesthetics of this fountain pen, though I'm not a big fan of pocket fountain pens, and I'm not a fan of Kaveco's styling. It is not something that I like all that much, and this pen here is no exception. Yes, the brass looks really nice, but in terms of the actual design of the fountain pen, I'm not the biggest fan, though you could say it is pretty irrelevant because at the end of the day, this is a workhorse fountain pen. This is not a Visconti. This is not a work of art and it is a workhorse pen. And when you look at it as a workhorse pen, I have to say it is very, very good at what it does. This is a very durable fountain pen. Brass is a very good you know, material to make durable fountain pens from, and I cannot see any situation where this fountain pen is going to be destroyed, apart from if you drop the pen on its nib. That's the only way that you can break this fountain pen. Now looking at the threads of the fountain pen, obviously they are gonna be made from brass and they are gonna be very, very strong. I don't think there's any pressure that you could put on this fountain pen that would break it. Looking at the converter, you can see that the converter that they've used is the Bale converter. It is exactly the same as the converter that you would find in the Bale fountain pen, and it does use the Bale nozzle. I'm not a huge fan of Bale fountain pens. I do, well, Bale fountain pen converters. I do think they are a little bit cheaply built compared to, say, Jinhao converters, but I've never had one fail on me. 
So let's talk about the nib of this fountain pen. This fountain pen uses a nib unit, and the nib that is in the nib unit is a clone of the Pilot style nib that you would find in the Pilot Metropolitan or the Pilot Prera. And I have to be honest with you, I did one writing sample in this fountain pen, and I was going to record another one, but unfortunately I dropped this fountain pen right after I did a writing sample, and ever since I have dropped it, the nib has never been the same. I guess I could replace it, you know, with a proper pilot style nib, but thankfully the nib that you will see in the writing sample will be it when it was brilliant, because this fountain pen's nib was brilliant before I dropped it. Before I dropped it, it was a great fountain pen. It has all the qualities that I would want from a Chinese style number no. five size nib. And what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, this fountain pen is not, uh, the nib is not as hard as nails. There is certainly some give in the fountain pen when you press down. And that's something that I look for in my fountain pens. I always want there to be a little bit of give in my fountain pens. I don't like it when it's, you know, hard as nails. And that's saying that is nice. It makes it more comfortable to write with, and I can write with it for longer periods of time. When you do use this fountain pen, you will notice that it's not as smooth as, say, a Wing Sun Cree 008. It certainly is smooth. There is a little bit of scratch to it, but, you know, it is smooth. It's not butter. But when you do use this fountain pen, you will notice that on the downstrokes, there is certainly a little bit of flex from this fountain pen, and there is going to be a lot more ink delivery, so you can get shading from this nib, which is really, really nice. That's something that I do like from my fountain pens. And you will see in the writing sample how... If you slow down and you take your time and you apply pressure, you can get some nice writing with this fountain pen. In terms of the reliability, this fountain pen is, yeah, it, it's pretty reliable. The feed in it is also a clone of the Pilot style feed, and the feed is really good. I've never had an issue with a Pilot pen, and the same goes with this. It is a very reliable pen. Sometimes if you do leave it for you know three days and you come back to it, the feed has dried out a little bit, but all you have to do is, you know, undo the fountain pen and just, you know, saturate the feed full of ink and you'll be good to go. And let's get into a writing sample. I think the best way I can show you how this fountain pen, you know, acts is Welcome to the writing sample for the $5 brass fountain pen. The ink that I'm using is Monteverde. I think this is Mercury Noir. And the paper that I'm using is Clairefontaine. Let's get into a quick writing sample. And you can see from that writing sample, there is pretty much no drama with this fountain pen. Though I do have to say, this writing sample was a little bit more fun to write with using this pen than most other Chinese fountain pens. You can see there is certainly a little bit of line variation and there is a little bit of shading from the ink. Most of the downstrokes allowed you know, the nib to flex a little bit more than most Chinese fountain pens and it let a bit more ink onto the page, the time spread, and you can see there is just a little bit more line variation in this writing sample. And of course, it means it is a little bit more fun to write with, and it is a lot more comfortable to write with. It is a very nice nib, though you can see here, no issues whatsoever from this fountain pen. Looking at fast writing, And you can see this pen is able to keep up with faster writing. Now moving it down. Let's have a look at wetness. 
average wetness for a fine nib fountain pen. In terms of line variation, absolutely nothing from the grinding. Though you can certainly squeeze something from pressing the nib a little bit harder. It is not much, but it is certainly something. That's no pressure. Slowly building up pressure. So you can certainly get something and you can get something that looks very, very nice indeed. In terms of reverse riding. Reverse riding is always really good on Chinese fountain pens. And there you pretty much have it, the review of the brass fountain pen. I honestly think for $5 you cannot go wrong with buying this fountain pen. Yes, you might get a dud nib, but Pilot nibs are pretty easy to come by and you can easily just do a nib swap in one of these, you know, using one of these nibs. But I have to say, $5 is crazy for a brass fountain pen, considering that the Delike is $30 and the Kaveco Sport is $90. I honestly cannot recommend this fountain pen enough if you're looking for a brass fountain pen that is a pocket fountain pen. Those are the criteria that you really need if you are going to buy this fountain pen. And you need to be set on the ergonomics of this fountain pen because I know a lot of people do like the Kaveco Sport, but there are a lot of people who don't like the ergonomics of the Kaveco Sport, me included. So what can I say about this fountain pen? Personally, it is not a fountain pen that I'm probably going to use in the future. It really isn't. It is a great pen to write with, but just because of the ergonomics, I don't think I'm going to be using this fountain pen all that much. And that's really what you need to think about when you're using you know, a pocket fountain pen. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching.